26 of the Noble Character Crafts podcast. My name is Amy, and I am coming to you from eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, February 7th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me today. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. I really appreciate you joining me today, and I hope that you enjoy this episode. This is a podcast all about my crafty life, and today I have knitting to share with you all. You can find me online on Instagram at Noble Character Crafts, and you can also get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. I am currently hosting a make along on Instagram for the entirety of this year. It is called the Make 9 2020 Mal, and it is for you to join in on the Make 9 Challenge, which is where you choose nine projects that you would like to make in the year of 2020 and post a board or a grid of those nine projects pictured in a, you know, a grid type format and put that on Instagram with, with the hashtag make nine 2020 mal. And that is the start of how you enter the make along. And then from then on, the make along is super casual, really. It's just a matter of you posting your progress pictures or any finished objects that you're able to complete from that make nine list. You are not required to finish all of the projects or even any of the projects. It's just an encouraging way for you to join in on the Make Nine Challenge to show which projects you would like to make and then for us to encourage one another as we try to make those nine projects. I have decided to make two boards this year just because I really enjoy gift knitting and so I decided to make a board specifically for gift knits as well as a board specifically for projects that I, will like, I would like to make for myself. But of course you don't have to do that at all. It's just really, you're supposed to make one board and it could be for gifts and personal projects combined. However you want to do it. Any crafts are allowed. So you could do, there's lots of sewing that you see on make nine boards, knitting, crochet, any kind of craft that you can think of, weaving, spinning, anything like that. Um, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't, if there's a craft that I haven't mentioned, it's fine, cross stitch. Anything that you can think of that you would like to make it, you can enter it into the Make Nine Challenge. And um, whips are also allowed. So if there's a project that you have had on the back burner for a long time and you'd really just like to finish it up in, in the year, um, go ahead and add that to your board. That's perfectly fine. So it's pretty casual. I just want you to, to post a board um, showing which projects you want to make. That's really the only requirement. I originally had said that I'd like you to post your board within the before the end of January this year, but I've actually decided to go ahead and extend that as well. So if there are any of you that would still like to join in and you hadn't made a board yet, go ahead and make a board now. And we have the ento entire year to make our nine projects. So there's plenty of time to continue to join in. And I would love to see what you all are making or hoping to make. As an encouragement, I just wanted to go ahead and pull a prize from those that have already been participating over on Instagram using that hashtag. And so I just randomly pick, I looked at all of the posts that um, were already posted, counted them up and did a random number generator and counted from you know the most recent to find out the winner. And the winner for this prize is Amy, who is A.L. Fenner on Instagram. So congratulations, Amy. I have a little prize that I'll be sending out to you, and it is this skein of yarn that I dyed myself. It is a one-of-a-kind colorway um, that I've had on hand for a while, and so I thought I would go ahead and get that sent off as a prize to you. I hope that you enjoy it. It's just a real light purple colorway, um, and then it's speckled with green and red on top. And I thought it'd be cute to pair it with this little mini, which is um, in my iron colorway. I am no longer dyeing yarn, but um, I was dyeing yarn, and this is one of the colorways that was in my shop. And it's a 20 gram skein. These are both on my Pitter Patter base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend Fingering Weight. And also with um, a new product that I received in the mail this week, I received this little additional gift that was sent with it. 
and it is a little stitch marker from a needle runs through it and it says it's wooden and it's engraved it says all you knit is love it's super cute so I thought I would send that along with the prize to you so I hope that you enjoy this gift Amy and I will continue to randomly draw prizes throughout the year to encourage you all as we uh, work through our make nine list so please continue to post your progress pictures on Instagram so that we can all see how everything is going with your projects. I have a finished object that I would like to share with you all this week and it is the gradient wrap that I had been working on for a couple of months. I was able to finish that up and I think it's lovely. I'm really really happy with how it turned out. So this is a pattern from the Vogue Knitting Magazine early fall 2019 issue. It is this cover pattern that is pictured on the cover here and it is a design by Mary Lynn Patrick. There's a few other pictures. And I knit this as a prayer shawl for my church's prayer shawl ministry. I don't have anyone in mind as to who it will be going to. I just made it to have on hand so that it will be ready to gift to someone whenever they are in need of a prayer shawl. So I am really happy with how it turned out. I did make a few modifications. I used a bulky weight yarn instead of a worsted weight yarn. I used a discontinued yarn from Lion Brand called Tweed Stripes in the Wildfire colorway, and it is 100% acrylic. I also modified the pattern in that I only did four repeats of the pattern instead of six, so it turned out a little bit more narrow than the original pattern, um, but since it was a thicker yarn, it's not as narrow as you would think it would be, but anyway, um, I'm, I'm really happy with the size of it. I think it's a nice um, width to wrap around the shoulders nicely and it's a really nice length as well. I was able to use up all of the yarn that I had on hand which was I think five skeins. <laughs> um, it turned out that it was 73 inches total in length. I did not change the needle size. I kept with the um, called for needle size, which was a US 8 5 millimeter needle. And yeah, I'm just really, really happy with how it turned out. I think the texture of it is so beautiful. And I think it's, it's really nice just to wear around the shoulders. It's a nice warm hug. <laughs> and um, I think it's really, it's just super cozy. And I love the colors and how the yarn striped kind of on its own it was really nice. So this was a super easy project, very mindless pattern, but I think that it's very, I love the, I love the pattern, how the texture really makes this kind of a basket weave type of look. I think it's so pretty. So it is, since it's bulky weight, it is a little bit more tricky than, you know, a fingering weight shawl to style in any other way, like wrapped around my shoulders. Um, it's a little bit bulky <laughs> but you know Nebraska winters are cold and so hopefully whoever this goes to will really enjoy it and it will be usable for them I hope it's not too bulky for whoever receives this but I like it I think it's wonderfully cozy and hopefully whoever this goes to will enjoy it too but I'm gonna wear it for now because I like it um, so yeah, that was my first finished object. I was also able to finish a few more dishcloths. I've just been knitting through my cotton stash and I only have really a few more, a few more colorways in my stash to knit through. And these are actually, the majority of these are all new yarns that I recently picked up just because I really like that, this type of yarn. But the, I did have one skein left of peaches and cream cottony yarn in my deep stash. And this is the last one that I made using up my old cotton stash. So I have no full skeins of peaches and cream left in my stash anymore. And I'm glad of that because it's not my favorite, but they do make nice dish claws. So anyway, this is the bright chartreuse colorway. I'm using a free pattern online called Grandmother's Favorite Dish Cloth. I am using a US 6 four millimeter needle and adjusting the pattern to increase the stitches to 52 stitches before I start decreasing instead of only 44 as the pattern calls for. 
Um, this particular pattern does not have a designer listed on the website, um, just the pattern. So I will link to that in the description box below. And all of the rest of the yarn that I used is Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton. And I have six done from that. I have two in the spunky colorway, which is a really fun colorway. I liked. I like knitting with the variegated colors, especially. This is another fun one. It's called Tart Orange, but I really like the variegation that that gives with them. Um, there's a little bit of lighter and darker areas in that yarn, which is really pretty. And then I just have one in the aqua colorway and one in the warm blush. Is that right? I feel like that's wrong. No, that's right. The warm blush colorway. <laughs> so anyway, I, um, these are just the project that I have just had on hand. They're my travel knitting lately. The project that I work on while I'm helping kids with schoolwork, you know, if there's some downtime, I always have a dishcloth on hand while I'm, I homeschool our children. And so if, you know, they're working on something and I have a little bit of downtime, I'll just knit on a few rows or while I'm listening to them read aloud to me, I'll knit on them. So anyway, it's just my easy project that I seem to always have one going um, at, at, at any time. I always have a dishcloth in the works. So that's been an easy project to have on hand at all times. All right, so on to my works in progress. The first one I have to share with you, I have shown for the last couple of weeks. It's just in a felted bag that I got from my husband's aunt. And I'm not gonna show this in its entirety like I did last time I recorded um, because I haven't put it on a larger cable again like I did last time. But this is the excavation blanket that I am knitting using lots of scraps. Um, every time I finish a fingering weight project, I add a stripe of color to this blanket. And I was using this project for the Make 30 for 30 make along that Natalie of Knitty Natty was hosting starting, it started uh, early January and ran uh, er, into early February. So that's officially over, although she's continuing to very casually host that make along still. So if you want to participate it's just for you to choose a project and knit for it uh, or crochet on it however whatever craft it is work on it for 30 minutes every day just to see how much progress you can make in that amount of time so i uh just i am i am currently caught up with adding yarn to this project i think i started to say but didn't finish that whenever i finish a project using fingering weight yarn i add a stripe of any left, if I have enough left over from that project, I will add a stripe of any colors that I used in that project to this blanket. This is a free pattern by Jana Pajota. Super easy. Um, you don't have to weave in any ends. You just leave tassels at the end of each row and, well, every other row, I guess. You, you cast on, or you add a new color, you leave a tail, you increase, knit across, increase again at the other end, knit back across, and then cut the tail again so that you have this pretty fringe or, yeah, fringe at the end here. So I have added all of the yarn that I have, well, it took me, I, I had added a bunch of yarn from the advent socks that I had made using tons of different scraps. So I had a lot of different colors to add to this blanket from that project, and I was able to get all of those added and so I'm currently caught up with all of the projects that I have knit, you know, adding that color to this blanket. I am using the recommended needle size, which is a US 2, 2.75 millimeter needle. And all of the needles that I use are Chowgu. Oh, so I did wanna share where I started when the Make 30 for 30 challenge started. And here is a progress keeper showing where I started 30, you know, when the 30 day challenge started, I think I have about 32 days work added to the blanket, but you can still see that I was able to make a significant amount of progress there. I mean, it is, quite, I meant to count the stitches because it's huge right now. Um, if you tuned in last week, you have an idea of how big it is, but it's quite crunched up on here. But it, last week it was at about 48 inches wide. And now I've been able to add a little bit more 
to it. So this progress keeper right here is marking where I was last time I recorded. And so I've been able to add a couple more inches there. So anyway, I probably won't show this project off on the podcast um, for a little while now because like I said, I'm pretty well caught up. So I will just continue to add yarn to it as I finish fingering weight projects. So this is obviously a long-term work in progress. Um, this is only, you know, I, I haven't even finished one half of the blanket and then I'll be knitting another half that will be, you know, equal in size. And then I'll be stitching those two pieces together. So my next work in progress is in this adorable little project bag that is from Caroline Watts Embroidery. I won this from uh, So Sweet Violet's uh, knit along that she was doing for her Sweet Bee socks pattern. That was so special to win and I love using it. It's perfect for socks. And in here is the first project from my personal Make Nine list that I am knitting. And it's uh, the original picture that I put on my Make Nine board was for a different pattern because this pattern hadn't yet been released, so I didn't have a picture of it. But my original intention was to knit this pattern, which is the Francis Socks by Emily Clausen, who is known as Salt City Knits on Instagram. And she also has the yarn company, the Yarn Brewery. And she also is a co-host of the Meanwhile at the Castle podcast. And last time I recorded, I was right here where this beautiful snowflake stitch marker is. I received this from a sweet lady that I go to church with. Hi, Michelle, thank you for this beautiful snowflake stitch marker. I thought it was perfect to add to these socks because I am using Emily's yarn, so the Yarn Brewery yarn, on her classic sock base, and this is in the colorway Snowflakes. I am so excited to be knitting Emily's pattern using her yarn. I think that's so special. I have had this yarn in my stash for over a year, so I'm very excited also to be using it up. This textured pattern is so much fun, pretty, really very easy, but I think it gives such a sweet texture to the pattern or to the sock. It starts off with a uh, one by one twisted ribbing. I uh, cast on 64 stitches. I'm using US1 2.25 millimeter needles. And I knit an extra long leg as I usually do. I think I doubled the amount of repeats that she, um, I think in the original pattern it calls for you to uh, repeat the pattern for six extra times and I repeated it for 12 extra times. So pretty much it's doubled in length for the leg. As you can see, I'm knitting these two at a time, which is my preferred way of making socks. And it has a heel flap and, or a slip, slip stitch heel flap and gusset. I am still doing the um, gusset decreases right now, but I'm really, really happy with how these are turning out. I love them. Super happy with this project and yeah, I'm really enjoying knitting on socks lately. I'm getting ready to cast on a couple more pairs soon. <laughs> I've already got the yarn caked up and ready to go. So, <laughs> but I'm trying to stay focused on the projects that I have going right now because I did also cast on two new projects since I last recorded. And so I'm excited to share those with you. The first one I have nestled in this cute little basket that I picked up at my thrift store, one of my local thrift stores. Whenever I go to thrift stores, I always check out the baskets. Although now I'm kind of at the point where I have enough baskets, <laughs> but I just really love, I love baskets. And so I always check them out when I'm at the thrift stores and they work really well for knitting projects, especially ones that aren't very transportable. And this one is not transportable because it is a full brioche project. So it takes a bit of concentration. This is the fourth project from my Make Nine gift list. And this is so much fun. This is the Rauli shawl, which is such a pretty pattern. And it is by Marie Amelie, I believe that's how you say it. She is a French designer and has so many gorgeous patterns, but this is the first time that I have ever knit one of her patterns. 
So isn't it stunning? I love it so much. It's just a work of art. I mean, I don't feel like I'm not trying to boast my own or toot my own horn. It's just that the pattern is a work of art. It is so well written. And I, I really cannot wrap my head around how this design forms. I'm just knitting it line by line and doing what she says. And this is what happens. <laughs> so I'm using my own hand dyed yarn for this um, on my pitter patter base. So it's a fingering weight 7525 blend. The two different colors that I'm using are my Honest colorway, which is, it's got kind of a light tan, light brown, um, sandy colored base. And then it's speckled with brown and deep plum. But then the brown really breaks into kind of oranges and blues sometimes too. You know. And then the other color that I'm using is a solid black night. It's my night colorway. I am using the recommended needle size, which are US 6 4 millimeter needles. I am knitting this for a very special lady that I go to church with, and I'm super excited to make this for her and gift it to her. As I mentioned, I love gift knitting, and it's just really a special process knitting a gift for somebody because, you know, I really am careful about what colors I choose for them. I try to really think about or be observant of what colors they wear a lot. And then as I'm knitting it, I'm just thinking about them and praying for them. And I just, I just really love the process of knitting for friends and family because I just think it's a really special, I just feel almost more connected to that person because I knit this, because I knit something for them. So anyway, I love that process. <sighs> anyway, this is so gorgeous. Of course, with brioche, it looks really cool on both sides. But um, this is the quote unquote right side. It's so pretty, isn't it? But it does take, it's not too terribly difficult. Once you get the hang of the brioche stitch, it has been a while since I've knit any brioche. So I had to kind of re- remind myself as to how the brioche, st brioche stitch works. But for this pattern, the only row that I really need to concentrate on is every right side pass using the main color. So I do that row and then I've got one row, a, another pass using the black color on the right side. And then I pass with the main color on the wrong side and the black color on the wrong side. So four rows basically for every round and only one of those four rows do I really need to pay attention to the pattern. The other three are pretty mindless. I just do the brioche stitch. Um, so anyway, it's not too terribly hard, but it does take a bit of concentration and I'm not, I'm just keeping this project at home to work on while I can concentrate on it. But I'm super happy to have this started and I'm hoping to be able to get it done, you know, before the cold weather. Um, you know, I was hoping to get it done in the winter so that she can use it as even like a scarf or of course as a shawl. So super happy with that project. But I think I'm even a little bit more excited about the next project. <laughs> this is another gift knit that I'm knitting for a friend and I'm keeping this in another thrifted basket. And I am knitting this for my good friend, Tina, who, if you've watched before, you've probably heard me mention because, well, I just happen to mention Tina a lot. <laughs> um, anyway, I am knitting a night shift shawl for her, which is a beautiful pattern by Andrea Mowry. And I will insert a picture here of all of the yarn that I kind of pulled together to make this project with. Tina gave me several um, skeins of yarn. Um, well, she gave me, I think it was three skeins of my own hand dyed yarn that she had either bought for me or I gifted to her. And then another skein of Malabrigo yarn. And she gift, gave them all to me to knit things for her. So she does knit. Um, in fact, she actually tried to teach me how to knit several years ago and it just never stuck. Um, but anyway, she doesn't knit difficult things. <laughs> so she knits dishcloths 
and I'm not and blankets maybe, but I'm not really sure if she does much more than that. She doesn't really enjoy knitting things that are challenging, and I love knitting things that are challenging. So we have a um, you know we vary we differ in that area. So anyway, she gave me this um, a bunch of her yarn because she I had made her some socks and she really enjoyed them, and so she thought she gave me the yarn to see if I would because I said I would love to make more socks for her. And I, one of the skeins was, the Mallory Brigo skein was damaged. Um, and so it, um, it was actually, well, I can kind of show you. It, I'm not sure if um, a moth got to it or something like that, but it was in, there was one salvageable cake of yarn that was a little bit larger than this. I've already used some of it. But then there were tons of little tiny balls <laughs> that, um, were kind of this the yarn had been broken on them i did give it a full freezer treatment so in case it was a moth that had damaged it, i didn't see anything in the yarn as i was skeining it up or any or winding it up or anything but just in case i did freeze it for i think like 48 hours took it out for at least 24 hours and then put it back in the freezer again for another round so i'm pretty sure it's well taken care of um but anyway, since I, and this yarn, this Malabrigo yarn does not have any nylon in it. It is um, their sock base. And so it's just 100%, I don't know why they call it a sock base when it doesn't have any nylon in it because I don't think that would be super great. I have tried to make socks with no nylon and have had bad success. <laughs> they have worn holes in them very quickly. Anyway, it's just 100% merino wool. And this is in their Archangel colorway. And anyway, so I didn't, I wasn't going to be able to make socks with this. And I asked her, would she like me to make a shawl? And I sent her a few pictures of shawls that I thought might work. And she sent me back pictures of the night shift shawl, <laughs> lots of different color combinations that she loved. And so at first I was like, well, I, this isn't the right type of yarn. The night shift shawl is calling for hand spun, you know, spin cycle yarn that has that hand spun look. And I don't have any hand spun yarn. And so I was just like, I really don't think that's going to work. And also that calls for the night shift shawl calls for worsted weight yarn. And this is fingering weight. So it was just not, I didn't think it was going to work. And I told her that and she was like, oh, that's fine. Just make something that you want to make. But then I kept thinking about it and I was like, I could just hold two strands of fingering weight yarn together and I get about a DK weight probably. But this shawl is just a triangular shawl. You increase every right side row. I just got to thinking that it wasn't really going to matter if it was thinner yarn because I could just keep knitting it and make it as big as I want to. So you saw all the colors that I had kind of chosen for this project and I'm just holding, I kind of have four different color families. So I have kind of a brown section. Um, the, the Malabrigo yarn, I have kind of some other ones that match it. I've got this corally color and burgundy. Um, so those kind of are one color family. I've got some oranges. Uh, most of these are my own hand dyed yarn, like one of a kind skeins, but I do have some Knit Picks, um, Stroll Tweed in here as well. So I've got some orange and gold kind of colors. Those are one family. And then I've got a little bit of green and teal on, um, as well. So that's the other the other color family and I'm just alternating them and I'm really not following the pattern very much as far as changing colors. I'm just kind of doing it as I want to. And yeah, it's working out really well. I'm really, really enjoying this project. So show it already. <laughs> I've made a lot of progress on it already and I love it so much. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, I think it's so cool. It's really, really fun to work on. Super easy. Once you get used to the stitch, it's mindless, totally mindless. So I love it. I love all the color changes and seeing the different colors together is so much fun. Super easy pattern. Like I said, you just, you know, keep increasing. So I'll just make it as big as I need to so that it's a nice size and, you know, wearable. So I'm really loving it. It is mosaic knitting. It's the first time I've ever done any mosaic knitting and it's super easy. It's just slip stitches. So it's working out so well. I'm loving it. 
I didn't change the needle size. I'm using the recommended needle, which is a US 8 5 millimeter needle. And I'm so happy with it. Hopefully you will love it, Tina. I think you will. <laughs> she really loves kind of autumnal colors, warm, rich tones like I do. So I think she'll love it. I hope so. So, and I think I have pulled plenty of yarn. Um, I'm sure I won't need all of the yarn that I've pulled for this project. And so I'm thinking I might, I've thought about even making another shawl for myself or even doing the pullover that Andrea Mowry has designed using the same stitch, which is the shifty, I think. Anyway, I might do that too because I just love it. So super, super happy with this project. Isn't it awesome? I love it. I love it so much. So, oh, I kind of wanted to discuss my knitting routine right now. So since I've been doing the Make 30 for 30 through the month of January, I wanted to continue doing that. Like I said, I am caught up with my excavation blanket right now, but instead I have four other scrappy blankets that I have on the go. So I have decided to continue doing the Make 30 for 30 using uh, and working on some of my other scrappy blankets. Um, just yesterday, I started working on the Miley Hexagon blanket that is a design by Emma of Potter and Bloom. I'm not gonna show that today um, just cause I barely made any progress on it, but I will show that probably next time I record. Um, I am gonna be using, focusing on that project for 30 minutes every day. So that's the first project I pick up in the morning. And then I've been working on my socks for a little bit, probably about a half hour um, as well every day. And then for the two shawls that I'm working on, I've been alternating every other day. So uh, yeah, I just alternate every other day working on the night shift or working on the Rowley shawl. And that pr process has been working really well for me um, to be able to make some progress and stay focused on the projects that I have on the go. Um, but like I said, I may be casting on a few more socks soon. So we'll see if I change that routine at all. And then of course, like I mentioned, I always have a dishcloth on the go as well for whenever I need an easy mindless project. All right. So that's all of the works in progress that I have to share with you. I do have a couple of new things that I just wanted to share really quickly with you all. The first, um, like I mentioned, that little progress keeper that is going with the prize that I'm giving to Amy, um, that came along with this gauge ruler that I ordered also from a needle runs through it. And I've wanted one of these for a really long time and it was really well priced. I just got it on their Etsy shop, which I will link in the description box below. And yeah, I'm super happy to have one of these on hand to make gauge swatching a lot easier. It's a really good quality wooden rule uh, gauge ruler. And then I also got a new book, new to me. It's not a newly published book. Um, it's called Vintage Knits and it's by Sarah Dallas with yes, Yester Knits. And it was published back in 2002. And it is full of um, inspiration from vintage patterns that they have reworked into, you know, they've rewritten, I guess, um, into modern terminology. But you do still have, for the garments in this book, you do still have the traditional construction of knitting garments from the bottom up in pieces, which is not my favorite, but um, it's just kind of, it's what you're going to get with vintage patterns. And I really love the look of vintage patterns. So I thought I would just show off a few of these that I really like. Here's the first one, which is called the Short Sleeved rib, Ribbed Lace Sweater. And they made this using cotton yarn. And I think that this would be really a great uh, sweater to have on hand for the warmer months. And uh, I think almost all of the, well, a few of the, many of the sweaters in this book have short sleeves. And my main um, apprehension to knitting bottom-up garments is the sleeves, making sure that they're the right length. And it's very difficult to determine that when you're knitting, when you can't try it on. But if they're short-sleeved, then it's not as crucial, I don't think. So 
anyway, I think this pattern is very, very pretty. I think it's really a lovely stitch. The next one I want to show you is these gloves. These are fair, just called fair isle gloves. And I think they're so pretty. I've never knitted any gloves before. I've knit mittens, but not gloves. So I'd really like to give those a try. I love this sweater. I think it's so cute. It is called the short sleeved wavy line sweater. And another issue with vintage patterns is that the sizing is pretty limited. I think this is one of the, one of the sweater patterns in here that they do not make in my size. So if I did make it, I would really need to make some adjustments to make it bigger to fit my bust circumference. The next one I want to show you is called the Fair Isle cardigan. And it's just so pretty. I really love it. So pretty. And then the last one, there's several, there's 30 patterns in here all together. Um, several of them are beautiful, but I just picked my five, my top five. <laughs> this is called the beaded sweater. And this is just another one that would be so great for the summertime. And the beads on that are just amazing, I think. I think that would be so lovely to have. So anyway, those are just a few of the beautiful patterns from this book that I was able to get on Amazon. So, and it was not expensive at all. I can't remember how much it was, but it was very affordable. So thought I would just share that. So I think that is all I have to share with you all. Um, we have had a, a, a tricky couple of weeks since I last recorded. We have been passing around a cold, a feverish cold. It started with our eldest and then just kind of went down the line. <laughs> so um, it hasn't been too terrible. They just get a fever, runny nose, coughing, sneezing. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. So, I mean, there's not, it hasn't been too terrible. It just has... And it, they still kind of, this cough kind of still lingers a bit. So thankfully my husband and I were not affected by it so far anyway. And it's kind of like been a few days since anybody has been affected by it. So I'm hoping we're in the clear, but anyway. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, seems to be going around through a lot of different families. <laughs> this is just the time of year when sickness goes around. So that's just part of life. It's all right. I, um, yeah, we've just been staying home a lot more than normal, which is perfectly fine by me. I'm a homebody. So I love being home. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to complain about that. So anyway, we've, um, been doing well otherwise and, um, yeah, just enjoying winter, I guess <laughs> the kids, uh, were outside sledding again today and we got a little, a little extra snow overnight. So that was always, that's always fun to have a fresh layer of snow to go sledding down. So anyway, um, I think that's all I have to share with you all this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate you giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to this channel. If you haven't yet, I would appreciate that so much. I hope that you all have a great couple of weeks ahead. Thanks again for joining me. Bye.